Hi, it's James Mitchell. Welcome to this video on Workshop Software. Really hope you like it and get some great value. Thanks for watching. Hi, and welcome to this video about how to get workshop software up and running. First of all, I wanna congratulate you on the decision to get workshop software. I think it's a great decision and it'll be great for your business and help your business to succeed. So what this video is gonna entail is it's gonna have a quick overview of how to set up your profile, set up some of the settings and make sure it's right for your business and set so that is best for your type of business. So you, if you're an auto repair business, that's great. If you're maybe a marine or a power equipment or a truck or motorcycle, there's all sorts of different businesses that we deal with and I'm gonna show you how to set it up best for your business. So first up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go check out the profile. And if you click the top button here and go into profile, this will have the details of your actual business. So first of all, at the top, you've got a couple of images. This is pretty straightforward. You can choose an image to print on your letterhead or, or on reports, and that's the main image that is gonna print you know, and is your logo. Uh, you've also got the company icon. You don't have to set an icon if you don't want to, but you can choose an image, and the icon will be displayed in a couple of areas in the system also. So choose those, pretty straightforward. Go choose the image, go and find what the image is, choose it, and away you go. Then you've got your actual company settings here. Again, these are fairly straightforward. One important thing, however, is to choose your country code. So for example, if I choose the United States and go and save, what that will do is that will go and set my system to the United States. And so for example, you'll see here now that there are states set for the United States. So that applies to all of the countries that have got set up in the system. So various things will happen. So phone numbers will be different, currencies will be different, those sorts of things. So you can set it to your particular country code. Uh, that's pretty important. The other thing you can do in here as well is you can get some SMSs. So you can click on buy SMSs, choose them, and uh, away you go. I think that's really important for communicating with clients. Pretty straightforward. Just put in a number. I want to buy, you know, 200 of them. Go agree, click on buy, and you can go and purchase your SMSs. So they're great for service reminders, they're great for contacting customers about bookings and about jobs and all of that sort of stuff as well. So that's the profile section. That's actually fairly straightforward. I think most of that's pretty self-explanatory. Let's now delve a little bit deeper and we're going to jump into the settings. So if we click on settings here and this opens up the settings menu, first of all, we're going to go into company settings. So the company settings have got the various settings for your particular business. So don't get too caught up on what all this has got in here. If there's some things in here that you don't understand, don't get too concerned about it. It doesn't particularly matter. Uh, but I'm going to run you through just briefly what some of these are going to be. So in here, you've got your ABN, uh, which will print out on the invoice. If you're in another country, that will be like your VAT tax code, that sort of thing. The mobile company name, this is the name that appears on an SMS or a text message that gets sent to your customer or to whomever and who it comes from. So it's like a, an identifier for you. This is what time zone you're in, your motor vehicle repair license number. So again, another license number. And then there's some settings about what you've got for your actual booking diary. So you've got what time you open and what time you close, and you've got how many, what your default work hours are for the day. So we can work out how many percentage booked you are, that kind of thing. So you can Simply click, just click here and set that to say you know, 8 a.m. and you close at 6 p.m., for example, which is probably more realistic. So then you've got these vehicle groups. Now, this is pretty important, this part of it. So what we can do in the vehicle groups is I've actually pretty much got all of the vehicle groups uh, already set. But what you will happen, have in your system is you'll only have the default system by default. So those default ones have just got basically cars in them, but you can remove them if you want. So you can click on the X and, and they, will, they will get, you know, you can get rid of these and then you can add other types in here as, as well. So for example, if you're a machinery business, you can add machinery, there's marine, there's power equipment, trucks, light commercials and so on. So there's all sorts of different uh, types of vehicle groups. And so when you're adding in a vehicle, it's easy to put in what particular type of vehicle that you're adding in and it becomes very familiar for you. You've got the default service interval, which we've set for six months. So that's how often uh, a car needs a service and how often you're going to follow them up. You can actually change that on a vehicle by vehicle basis. 
and what the preferred method of contact is for your customers. So by default, when you add a customer in, what do you want them their contact method to be? We recommend that you set this default method to SMS because that's the most effective way, we believe, of communicating with your client. You can change that again on an individual customer by customer basis. So don't think that that's all you can send out. That's fine. Uh, you can send out, set the default for each individual customer as well. Then if we just go down a little bit, we've got the tax settings. So this is the tax name. So in here we've got GST, that could be VAT, that could be sales tax, that could be whatever is appropriate for your particular area. You've got the purchases tax rate and you've got the sales tax rate. You can simply, if your uh, particular locale is say 15% tax rate, you can make it 15%. There's also a couple of important things here. You've got the price including includes tax, yes or no. What that means is, is that if I say yes, that means that all the prices that I put on an invoice are going to be inclusive of tax. You might find that easier to do and it will mean that your invoices will print out including tax as well. So when a customer gets an invoice, it will say $110, let's say, and it will say, hey, that includes $10 of GST. If you say that it's not including tax, you would actually put the price in at $100 and it would add GST onto it or add tax onto it as well. So it would say $100 plus $10 tax and the total is $110. At the end of the day, you've got the same result. It just depends on how you want to operate and what way you want to actually print out your invoices in terms of tax. Tax freight means, do you want to enter in the freight amount on an invoice, including tax? So let's say you were going to charge $10, including tax of freight, and you had that set to yes, you can just enter in $10 and bang, away it goes. If you wanted it to be $10, you'd need to, and you had tax included doesn't include tax, if you put in $10, it would add a, t a dollar of tax or whatever the percentage is of tax, in this case 10%, so it would add a dollar of tax onto your invoice. Rounding the total, you can have a rounding, you turn rounding on and off on the invoice. So let's jump now into the invoice settings. So you've got a few different types of ways that you can print out the invoice and you might want to play around with those. So there's this default style, which is probably the way that we might recommend it, uh, but there are other ways of printing out the invoice as well. So the labor style, for example, will print parts, will print the invoice in the order in which you set the invoice up. So you can actually change the order of the items on the invoice and basically it will have a, t a total by each different type of labor that is in your invoice. So that's the labor style. That can be pretty popular as well. If you're printing with a letterhead, you can choose a letterhead but you want to put your company details in or a letterhead without your company details. So in other words, do you want us to print your company details or does your letterhead print the company details? So there's a couple of options there. Uh, you've got um, things on the invoice like you want to might want to hide the part numbers, you might want to hide the labor quantity, hide the line prices so you just got totals. Um, do you want to print a barcode on the job card? That's for mechanics clocking on and clocking off. You can actually make the invoice number equal your job number. So if you've got job number and you started at 10,000, when you process that job, the invoice number will be the same. We actually recommend that that's off, but you know you can do that as well. That's absolutely fine. If you've got an order attached to an invoice, do you want to be able to process it if that order hasn't been received yet? So some businesses, they don't want to be able to process the actual invoice, the sales invoice, until the order that is attached or belongs to that invoice has been processed. So you can set that to yes. And do you want to print out your pricing on the job card? So the next bit are your invoice numbers. So you can set up your invoice numbers that you want to start them at. So for example, in this instance, you know, we started at say at 50,000, you might want to, I, we suggest you create your credits and your purchase orders and your receipts, make them a different range of numbers. So that's uh, certainly important uh, and, and a, a good example or a good way of doing it. So that's the company settings. I think most of those are fairly straightforward. Like I say, don't get too caught up on uh, what you don't understand there or, or if you want, if you think you should or shouldn't have it. There's no right or wrong answer. That doesn't matter. What I'm going to take you to now is I'm going to take you into the company lists. So in these lists, these are the templates that you can have in the system and, and the lists that are in the system. So in here, this invoice note template is where you can actually put re, write predefined notes on 
that you've already got set up and you can add them onto an invoice or onto a job as you go along. So for example, if I have a look at this particular one here and click on edit, this has got some details on it, right? So you can put in whatever you like. You know, you've got, um, say that one, there's a couple of example ones that we've put in here. Um, but you can put in all sorts of things that you want in here and you can add those automatically onto the comments areas. Very similar for a job card for the notes on the job cards. You can set those up. We haven't set a template there. You simply go into plus, give it a description, put in the details and away you go. Uh, the same with document templates. So if you're going to send out a document to a customer, so say for example, if you're going to send out uh, service reminders by, via a document, uh, then you'd need to set up one of these document templates. You've got email templates as well, so similar thing. This is the email template, so when you're sending out an email, you can have sim standard ones, same with SMSs. And then we've got the different types of list lists in here. So these are the customer sources, so you can actually add your own customer sources and you can delete the ones that are already in there. If you want to delete them, you can. You've got your payment methods that you can set up for yourself, so um, you know, add your own payment methods. Again, you can delete the payment methods what product groups you've got in the system. So these are the different product groups and you can click on plus to add a new product group in there and uh, which again is pretty straightforward. So you just go plus and just put in the details. Um, those product groups can actually also be added in from when you go and put in the actual product details. Okay, so next up, let's go under the settings now and there's things in here such as reminders. We can set up reminders to automatically go out, which is a really cool thing uh, to set your service interval and go and set the number of days that you want that to go out and then you can go and send out your service reminders all automatically. It's really a cool way of getting your customers coming back into your system. You've also got the messages. So these messages are, for example, you've got the footer messages. So what do you want to display at the bottom of your invoice? So you can type anything you like in there and that, that will actually print out on every single invoice that you print out. Similarly for a job card. So on the job card, you can have your terms and conditions on there, for example. So that's a, that's a really cool thing as well. So go and put those details in there. Same thing for a statement, for a quote. And then you've got some email messages. So when you're sending out an invoice, these are the information that gets sent at the body of the email. It's body of the statement, for example, body of the supplier order and body of a customer email. By default, you can edit them as you go, So, but these are just defaults. So I'd suggest you go through and set them up. That'll only take you a few seconds. Uh, it's pretty straightforward to do and away you go. So then let's have a look at the schedule too. So the schedule, if you're using the booking diary, you can set the schedule for the booking diary and set what times you're open, what times various mechanics work and stuff like that. There is a full video on this, so I suggest you watch the video. We're not going to go into details on this, but just to let you know that the schedule is there and it's actually fairly straightforward to set up as well. Under user settings, uh, there's a couple of uh, user settings. So you'd be able in here to change the password, for example, and a couple of setting options in here, which are fairly straightforward for the current user. And then we've got the user setup as well. So for example, if you wanted to create a new user, you can click on the plus sign here and you can go in and add new user details. And so you can choose what their security level is going to be and then put in their name and last name, their email and password and save. One important thing in here as well is their dashboard privileges. So if you want to give them full privileges to the dashboard or do you just want to limit the privileges? So the full privileges on the dashboard show, let's just jump into the dashboard and you'll see that that's got all of the sales information and stuff like that. Those full privileges show that. If you turn that, if you turn that off to limited, those things go away. So that's the quick overview of the settings in the system and how to get your workshop software set up and running. I hope you found this really great value. If you've got any questions, by all means, get in contact with the support team, get in contact with us. We're happy to help you out. We're happy to run you through the system and make sure that you get the absolute best value out of workshop software. Thanks for watching. Really appreciate your support.